hello everyone and welcome to my channel if you are new if you're not new welcome back to my channel my name is marina and today i'm doing something different it's been a long hard stressful week okay um i blame it on school school is the bane of my existence as some of you guys may know so i wanted to do a video that took little to no thinking okay just good great and serious fun i'm gonna be tier ranking today specifically tier ranking romance tropes this is my bread and butter okay if you have followed me on this channel since the beginning you would know that i am kind of sort of an avid romance reader as far as like when it comes to common knowledge of tropes i'm not gonna sit here and lie and say i've read every single trope on this tier bracket but i have read most of these and and i just think this would be a fun video to do because it takes a little to no thinking and i don't want to think right now i'm tired of thinking i know the tier ranking was like a big thing on booktube specifically like last year or like the year before last and i kind of want to bring it back i think it's a fun idea and i can't wait to start so yeah okay, without further ado let me show you my tiers so my tiers are here Okay, these are all my tiers. For the most part, I think they're kind of self-explanatory. Like, I feel like I don't need to explain this. It just takes a little bit of common sense. But let me just walk you through it, okay? So, first tier, top tier, is pump this in my veins. Meaning that this is a trope that I love so dearly that I just need it in my system. I need it pumped in my veins. I need this to live. AKA my all-time favorite romance tropes, okay? okay and then so good that it's great um i say this a lot in videos and i don't know where i started saying it but that's to just describe like tropes that i really really like it's just not up there in my top spot okay and i think that's a good way to describe it this middle tier is like could live without it like i don't hate it i don't love it it's kind of just there and if i were to read a book with that trope i'd probably be like mm, it was okay it did what it was supposed to do but i could live without it you know and then this tier is not my cup of tea, self-explanatory, it's just not my cup of tea. And then lastly, we have Jail. These tropes are ones that should have the authors and the creators of this trope in prison. And I'm not gonna go into that any further, okay? Again, self-explanatory. So that being said, let's get into it. So first trope that I am saying is a love triangle trope. You know what when it comes to love triangles it's a classic in romance you know you have to have a love triangle in some capacity some way shape or form you're gonna have especially if you were like a fantasy romance ooh, love triangle is definitely gonna be in there so it's one that i've gotten used to but i could honestly live without it like i don't need it in order to read a romance at all like i'm good without it but it's fun sometimes most of the time it's annoying, but sometimes it's fun. Okay, next we have fake dating. <laughs> it's not my cup of tea, which I know is probably like, whoa, because it's such a popular trope. But for me, I just feel like if you're gonna date, then just date. You guys have chemistry. You know this, even if you hate them, because a lot of fake dating is like enemies to lovers fake dating. Even if you hate them, you know that the chemistry is chemistry. If you see the potential, if you like each other why not just do it for real it's just always been such a stupid trope to me and then like they're always scared of committing to it like why you're already basically dating there's no there's no need for this you're just being extra yeah it's not my cup of tea it just irritates me but it doesn't keep me away from reading it like a lot of romances have fake dating so one way or another i end up reading it somehow because i go into books basically like not knowing anything half the time sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but i genuinely prefer to not read it okay sports romances Ooh. okay so this is very general what kind of sports are we talking not saying i'm a sports girl i know little to nothing about any sport known to man but a sports romance Ooh. like are we talking hockey are we talking football player are we talking basketball because different sports romances depending on the sport give me a different vibe a different feeling but overall i would say ooh, i don't know i would i'm de i'm debating should i say it's so good that it's great or pump it in my veins it really depends on what sports romance it is like it just genuinely depends but yeah since there's no specific general sport mentioned i think i'm just gonna put it in it's so good that it's great um because i genuinely think that it is i enjoy a good sports romance last year 
or maybe the year before last, I was eating my sports romances up, eating it up. And it's kind of one of my favorite things, especially if it's like a fluffy romance book. Like it doesn't need any smut or anything. Like a lot of sports romances could easily do without the smut and I'd still be happy. Okay, so the next romance is Single Parent. Oh, I could do without the kids sorry i could personally do without children in my romance and that's what the single parent trope brings me uh and i don't want it half the time granted sometimes the kids could be cute like some books that i really really love end up having kids in them whether it be because of this trope or another one that i'm sure we're going to get some point down the line but yeah um i just feel like i don't really need it I'd rather it not exist in the books that I read, but sometimes it's done well. I just don't want it in my books. Accidental pregnancy. Now this is the trope I was talking about where sometimes it's either this or single parent that can make a kid get involved in the books that I read. Um, now I'm not saying that the authors that write this deserve jail. I'm not gonna put it that far, but it's like somewhere in the middle. I'm <laughs> Okay, I'm not gonna be dramatic. It's not jail but it's very close to being it's not my cup of tea for the same reason as single parent i just don't like children but also because i feel like with accidental pregnancy it's just weird because it's more like forced proximity but like not in like the tension that i want it's more like forced proximity meaning like we have to get along because we're bringing we're, we are bringing another life into the world and then they slowly start to develop a, a bond and i don't really like it when my romances work that way like i don't want that <laughs> i don't want a relationship by convenience of baby the relationship could have easily flourished without them forcing this now because of a baby involved that's how i feel about most accidental pregnancies can't i just can't get into it i'm sorry i'm sorry on to the next one <laughs> oh no you guys know that i have recently developed a new discovery about myself okay i recently read a bully romance like a month ago it was part of the spear crest kings series or whatever and i gave it three stars 3.5 something like that so now that is making me question where I should put this. Because originally, if you were to ask me like no less than maybe eight weeks ago, I would have said jail. But I'm a changed woman. I think it genuinely just depends on the author and the writing because the way that Aurora Reed wrote those books made me question everything I know about myself. But I think in general, yes, bully romance should go in jail. Because not all bully romances can give me characters like the ones in that series. So the bully romance in it wasn't what made me want to read it. Like it's not my favorite trope at all. I could easily do without it. And I hate the fact that it's even a thing. Like yeah, enemies to lovers is one thing, but you're telling me that you're bullying your later on love interest the love interest that you're supposed to end up loving that you guys you guys meet cute is you pushing her in lockers and making her hate herself no thank you jail time jail time jail time mm -mm. absolutely not yeah that's my take but it's very conflicting because i did just give a bully romance like 3.5 stars anyway next is brother's best friend i'm also reading a brother's best friend book right now and it's eating so hard. It's the same one that involves fake dating. I think I really like this trope. Um, it's so good that it's great. I really, really like it. I feel like I haven't read enough books with this trope though, if I'm being real. So if you guys would like to recommend me more, go ahead. Friends with benefits to lovers. Um, okay, I'm not against friends with benefits to lovers. I think it can be cute sometimes, but in the same regard as fake dating, I'm just like, you guys know that the chemistry works inside and outside of the bedroom. Why not just actually date? Like it's one of those things where it just like pisses me off sometimes. I'm just like, you're gonna spend like this entire like 300 page book, over half of it, you're just sleeping together and then you wanna get together. Like we could have easily solved this in the beginning. I don't know, it's one of those things. Like I could live without it, but it's like, it could be cute sometimes. I don't know workplace romance um mm, i don't know i could live without it but i like it i like it it's not something that i really need though like there's some that i really do like um for example i read astrid parker doesn't fail that's a part of like the delilah green series or whatever um that's technically a workplace romance and i really really love that i gave that five stars and then you have books like the hating game uh so yeah, I just feel like 
it depends again on what the setting the scene the characters are giving but i like it but i could live without it next up we have enemies to lovers pump this in my veins pump this in my veins give it to me i need it pumped in the iv hook it up i love enemies to lovers i do one of my favorite tropes sorry to be basic but it's true it's one of the best tropes though i only really prefer it in fantasy i feel like in a real world setting it's kind of corny kind of especially if it's like in a workplace oh my god like i'm sorry you're working at a desk job you should be minding your business and making your coin why are you enemies of the person you're sitting across from that's weird but in fantasy oh it hits hits every time i love me good enemies lovers teacher student jail jail now again this also depends like how old are they like is it a grad student with their professor granted i still don't like it but like age really matters and i feel like the only time i really see teacher student relationships and tropes brought up in books is when it's inappropriate like really like age gap very inappropriate and i don't like that i don't like that at all so jail <sighs> strangers to lovers um that's okay I guess it's such a general trope that I just have no feeling towards it. Strangers to lovers could go and could live without it. Like it's there and it's nice, but I could easily live without this trope. Okay, childhood friends to lovers, not my cup of tea. Sometimes it can be cute, okay? I'm not hating on people that like it. Like sometimes every once in a while, if I do read a childhood friends to lovers books, I think it's cute sometimes, but I don't know. I feel like, again, you guys have known each other forever you guys know each other in and out like your childhood friends and you haven't tried it at least once that's weird to me like what what's all this build up and tension for just get together that's so strange to me and the way that it's explained of why they wouldn't do it with one another or why they wouldn't get together if the reasoning is always so stupid can we please be for real like please like uh it's so annoying sometimes and the childhood friends lovers books like they drag out at some points too because like you know that the chemistry is there that they're both feeling each other and yet they still wouldn't do it like they'll come so close to doing something and they'll push back it's weird i don't know i just feel like it, it strings me along that trope really like irritates me sometimes um slow burn i love a good slow burn give me a romance that's like a thousand pages and i'll read it i love me my cute little 300 page romances like those are nice and all but a slow burn where like i can feel the build up i don't want to see them even touching hands until the 300 page mark or even 400 pages that's what I'm talking about. Like, give me that. What happened to that? I feel like the slow burn trope is such a lost art. And I would like to see it. I would. I would. Friends to enemies to lovers. Ooh. I like this, actually. I, I think it's so good that it's great. Being able to see that dynamic between the two characters and how they ended up this way. Interesting to me. I like that. Next one, age gap. Haha. <laughs> of course jail 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 now uh, there are some things that need to be taken into consideration like how big of the age gap like how old are the characters just because they're legal doesn't mean that it's okay to do it so like how old are they as in like are they in their mid-20s like there are layers to this different factors to take into consideration but overall the trope just makes me feel gross it makes me feel gross a lot of the time and so jail because who even came up with that? Why? <laughs> uh, okay, the next trope is one of us is famous. So good that it's great. I don't know. I like that. I like it because it makes the added factor of having to sneak around a lot. Um, and I, I like doing that in romances. Like uh, Red, White, and Royal Blue did that really well in the book where both of them were famous. So they had to sneak around. One of my favorite books, The Tw Twisted Games. It's in the Twisted series by Anna Hong. One of the characters is a princess and she has to sneak around with her bodyguard. I love tropes like that. I do. I love it when one of them is famous because it adds this little level of tension where we can't be out in the open and date each other but like behind closed doors it's getting steamy in the back that's always fun i hate everyone in the world but you yes yes i love it but also i don't like it when like 
the person who hates everything is a dick to everyone else like yeah you can hate everyone in the world but me but if you're a terrible person then i don't want you you don't have to tolerate everyone but you have to at least be a decent person you know and i feel like that with this trope there's a fine line between the two and a lot of authors touch the line a little bit too closely and it's a mm, but overall i really do like the trope pump it into my veins it's one of my favorite tropes as you can see pump it into my veins right person not enough time I'm in between these two right now because I don't know how to feel about it. I've only... Have I read a book with this trope? I don't know. I feel like it'll give me the angst that I want, but at what cost? At what cost? Because I don't want to be sad when I read a romance. Like, that's no fun. Like, I would like it if the people that I like end up with each other in the end that's what i prefer but again i love angsty romance like give me character arcs that make them feel like real people and i think that's what comes with a trope like this I could live without it but i would like to read something like this because i'm trying to think i've read so many books i don't know i would like to read a book with this just to see how it's done because in my head i can see how it could be good but i feel like i've never read anything where this has happened so if you guys have recommendations this is literally just me asking for recommendations for romance books but it's true if you guys have recommendations for any of these tropes that you think could change my mind let me know um friends to lovers same reason of like the childhood friends to lovers like why why you have chemistry you both like each other just date sorry it's just boring it's boring to me good boy bad girl Ooh so good that it's great i have not read a book like this well no i have i have i've read like maybe two or three and i've eaten it up every single time i wish there were more like this like i love a golden retriever guy and then a badass grumpy girl like it's really satisfying to me and my spirit because usually it's like the other way around i like it when it's done like this forced proximity i love forced proximity forced proximity as in like oh they were roommates uh-oh like that type of thing um I don't know i just like it i think it's nice bad boy good girl okay i like this too so good that it's great it's a classic it's a classic in romance i'd be a weirdo not to put this up there i don't love it at like so much that i need it in my system but i recognize what is a classic in this list i basically grew up with that trope so it would be weird if i didn't put it up there in rankings you know mafia romance I've only read a few mafia romances in my life. I've read like two series and I don't remember what they're called. I remember thinking this deserves jail. Like, yeah, most of mafia romances, is like, it's like the guy who's like head over here, head over heels, hates everyone in the world, but the girl, the main character. But some of the stuff, like a lot of mafia romances that I've read at least are dark romances to the point where I'm just like, oh, maybe you all shouldn't be together in the end. Like this kind of stuff seems a little bit wild, a little bit weird. Um, does that mean it deserves jail though? Let me be realistic. I think I could put it in not my cup of tea. I think. I don't think it deserves jail, but sometimes I, I, I like the few I have read, I'm kind of just like, oh, this is, this is something. Grumpy sunshine. At this point, I kind of need a grumpy sunshine in my system. I need it, but I'm good without it. So it's so good that it's great. Mm, no, I changed my mind. It's pumped this in my veins. I love grumpy sunshine dy dynamic. I love it so much. One of my favorites. This is also a classic, I fear. Everyone knows about the grumpy sunshine. We all look for it. And again, I really love it if it's a good girl, good boy, bad girl trope that's mixed in with this. Like, oh yes. Bodyguard romance, eating it up pump it in my veins need it in my system absolutely i want more bodyguard romances seriously if you guys have any let me know i would love to read some okay right person wrong time is there a difference between the two of these i guess so i'd say i could live without it but i feel like both of these because they're kind of the same kind of not i feel like both of these will give me enough angst where i would love it but i don't need a trope like this to exist because I want both of my characters to be together in the end. <laughs> like, preferably, that's what I would want. So, only one bed. Boring. Sloppy. Messy. Snooze. Lazy. I, I can't with the one bed trope. I can't. We're too grown. We are too grown. Just go to another hotel. Sleep on the floor. And then you wake up the next morning in his arms and their arms. And it's just kind of like, ugh got it 
understood whatever let's move on i don't know i just i something about that trip like i cringe every time i read it sometimes it's it's cute but eh, i could do without it love at first sight not my cup of tea because who are you to fall in love at first sight you don't know this person be so fucking for real <laughs> i personally can't get behind love at first sight never have even as a kid i was like this trope doesn't make sense because you, you see it in a lot of like disney movies and stuff as a kid i was like why does he like her so much i don't get it and i still feel that way till this, till this day i can't it just doesn't feel realistic to me like i said i'm the person that loves a good slow burn if you're feeling love right off the first glance not no sorry <sighs> yeah this is my tier ranking ta-da and i think this is a set list like i'm pretty confident in everything here for the most part and that's going to be the end of this video i hope you guys enjoyed this if you did thank you i wasn't kidding by the way give me recommendations for any of these tropes i'll even take like romanticy like it doesn't have to be a straight romance book with these tropes you could easily give me a fantasy with this trope any of these tropes in it and i'd probably I, i'd read it i would but yeah if you guys enjoyed this thank you if you like to follow me on my social media here it is I mostly interact on Twitter, but if you like to follow me on all the other apps, they will be linked down in the description below. Before I go, I want to say thank you for 100 subscribers. That's so cool. Welcome to the channel. Hope you like it here. Hope you enjoyed this new video. Yeah, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you for that. Anyway, I think that's it. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, everyone.